let's kick off. So welcome to today's Postgres World webinar using Postgres in a multi-tenant SaaS and securing everyone's data. We're joined uh, by Rajan uh, Palanevi, uh, sorry, Palaneville. Oh my gosh, we went over this beforehand. No worries. Uh, perfect. Uh, who is a security architect and the VP of engineering at baffle.io, who's going to discuss PostgreSQL uh, in a multi-tenant SaaS, including compartmentalizing each tenant's data at the row or logical database level, implementing multi-tenant BYOK easily without any application changes, and centrally managing and defining policies for keys. My name's Lindsay. Uh, I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Um, Rajan has been with Baffle for the last eight years and is now heading their engineering team. Before Baffle, he was with Intel, and his background is in systems and security. So welcome. That's it from me. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off now. You can take it away. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Um, so I'm going to actually go over uh, the data isolation in multi-tenant PostgreSQL. Um, we'll start with the introduction. I want to give a short introduction about uh, Baffle and what we do. And uh, I'll follow it up with uh, the problems with multi-tenant PostgreSQL in terms of security. Uh, then actually, I'll go over some of the current methods that are being used and the limitations with the current methods. Uh, then I'll go over how we can address those current uh, limitations uh, with application layer encryption. And then I'll go over some of the challenges in actually implementing application layer encryption. I'll go over some more details of that. Uh, then I'll go over the architecture um, of the solution and how we can handle uh, multi-tenancy, either it is, uh, whether it is row level or database level, I'll go over some of the details. And also I'll, I'll finish up with uh, different uh, variants of key management like bring your own key or hold your own key variants. And then I'll summarize my talk. So moving on, so introduction. So, so Baffle is uh, our enterprise, uh, we deliver enterprise class data security products. Uh, our focus is end-to-end -end data protection. So the first one is actually multi-tenant data isolation uh, with what we call transparent application layer encryption. I'll go over the details later. So we do like field level encryption what we call it as in-use encryption. This is uh, in addition to in-transit and uh, in uh, at rest encryption. So we support multiple types of encryption, um, tokenization and the rule-based access control. Uh, we support uh, different databases, open source databases. Today's talk is primarily on Postgres, but we also support MySQL and the data lakes such as uh, AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, and uh, data warehouses such as Redshift and Snowflake. Uh, we also have solutions for uh, sensitive data protection for GNA applications and then application to application protection. But of course, today's topic is focused on multi-tenant data isolation in Postgres. So that's the short introduction. So I'll, I'll start with the, with the problem statement. Um, so uh, typically SaaS environments or SaaS providers actually have a multi-tenant uh, databases such as Postgres. The reason why they have uh, multi-tenancy is, uh, you know, they, they have data uh, for efficiency, they share the infrastructure and then they store data belonging to multiple of their customers, also called as tenants, in the same or shared infrastructure. So uh, having data in the shared infrastructure or having data belonging to multiple tenants in shared infrastructure uh, lacks effective tenant isolation, data isolation. For example, data belonging to uh, several tenants are commingled in Postgres. The way it is commingled is uh, the data can be commingled uh, in logical databases, uh, every tenant will have a separate logical database, but all those logical databases will be hosted in you know, single, uh, a single Postgres instance. And in other cases, uh, uh, basically the, the uh, data belonging to multiple tenants can be uh, commingled within a table. So different rows in a table uh, can belong to different tenants. So as we see here, uh, data is commingled. And, uh, and uh, there are problems with that. Uh, the first problem is once actually tenants or customers of SaaS providers share the data with third party SaaS, they kind of lose control over the data. The data actually goes to the SaaS provider and then kind of lose control. 
And of course, as I mentioned before, um, the num number two major problem is uh, lack of strong isolation uh, between tenant data and the shared infrastructure. What happens is so this can actually possibly, uh, you know, lead to like, you know, accidental data leakage between tenants, uh, data leakage to the SaaS provider themselves, uh, data leakage to the, the databases, database provider uh, that actually is the backend of SaaS providers. So this is a problem statement and there is uh, SaaS environments use shared infrastructure to host um, um, data belong to multiple tenants. And there is a need for strong isolation of data in this shared infrastructure. And we're going to look into how that can be done, especially in the case of Postgres uh, databases. So moving on to the current methods, of course, there are like uh, methods that are currently being employed to address this problem. Um, so I'll go over those methods and then the limitations with those methods. The first method that is actually uh, widely used is something called edge encryption. So what uh, the model here is um, the, the SaaS provider deploys a proxy or an edge proxy in between the tenant application or tenant's um, endpoint, which can be a browser and the SaaS platform itself. The proxy sits in between the, the tenant's application or tenant's browser and the SaaS platform. And all the traffic goes through this edge proxy. And then the edge proxy actually uh, detects sensitive data in the traffic and then uh, encrypts it before it reaches the SaaS platform. So this one model that is currently being used, but the limitation with this model is once data gets encrypted, uh, it, the SaaS platform functionality will start to break. So because the data lands is encrypted in the SaaS platform, um, the functionality that is actually being uh, implemented in the SaaS platform on those encrypted data will not work because the semantics of encrypted data is completely different from and the original data. So that's the problem with edge encryption. And the second uh, second uh, uh, technique or second method that is used for data protection in the multi-tenant or SaaS environment is the traditional transparent data encryption. Uh, it's called as TDE or storage level encryption. So the backend databases, the SaaS providers use, uh, they will actually employ this uh, transparent data encryption or uh, storage level encryption. But this TDE or storage level encryption is kind of uh, several years old. It was actually built for a particular um, theft, uh, a particular threat uh, that is actually storage medium theft. But that is not a relevant uh, threat anymore because nowadays in the cloud environment, modern environments, um, you know, storage medium theft or uh, disk theft is not the main problem. The main problem is uh, adversaries sitting in remote computer and then, you know, uh, uh, exploiting some issues or some uh, bugs in the in the software stack, and then are doing some social engineering and getting the uh, uh, the uh, the, um, the passwords and stuff, and then they'll be stealing the data from remote database servers. So uh, providing transparent data encryption or storage level encryption doesn't uh, map with the current uh, threat model. So that is also uh, not uh, relevant for uh, uh, for the current uh, current uh, need of the day. So these are the two uh, current methods, edge encryption and transparent data encryption, but uh, both of them have their own limitation, uh, especially for protecting data in the Postgres uh, multi-tenant databases. Okay, so how do we address these limitations? Like, uh, so we need a solution uh, that protects the data tenant's data in the third-party SaaS environment, but at the same time, it should not break any of the SaaS platform functionalities. So the way to do that is uh, implementing application layer encryption. So application layer encryption can be implemented by the SaaS platform, by the SaaS provider. They make sure that the data gets encrypted before it goes to the backend databases. So that way the SaaS platform will not, uh, functionality will not break, but at the same time data can be encrypted um, in the in the, uh, in the end to end fashion in the, in the storage environment. So, same way, I mean, in addition to not breaking the SaaS platform, uh, it's also possible to isolate tenant's data cryptographically uh, with application layer encryption. So the, the SaaS provider can build the application layer encryption in such a way uh, that uh, the tenant's data is encrypted with tenant's specific keys. So you know, different uh, tenant's uh, data will be encrypted with different keys so that it provides strong uh, cryptographic uh, data isolation in the, in the, storage, in, in the storage layer. And in addition to that, I mean, how this application layer encryption can also be extended to provide workflows 
for procuring keys uh, from the uh, data owner, which is a tenant here. So we call it bring your own key or hold your own key. So this actually provides total control of the data to the owner themselves. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the owner the owner can uh, imp, uh, revoke their key anytime they want. Once the key is revoked, then the data cannot be decrypted. So that way, the, the tenants can make sure that they have full control over the data. So the application layer encryption actually solves all the limitations with the current models. So it does not break the SAS functionality. It is able to cryptographically isolate tenants data. And it also provides an option uh, for providing the uh, control of the data to its uh, to its owner uh, with bring your own key and your own key workflows. So, so we need application layer encryption uh, to solve this problem. So moving on. Uh, so, but implementing application application layer encryption is not easy. It uh, it comes with its own challenges. And the first challenge obviously is you know if the SaaS provider wants to implement application layer encryption, they basically have to make changes to their application. Uh, they need to basically have their application developer use some encryption SDK and then integrate that SDK as part of their application and then make sure that uh, that is integrated properly. So it's there's a need for the application developers um, uh, that, are, that are building the SaaS platform to have a knowledge about uh, security as well as the encryption SDKs. That's actually is a, uh, is a, is a challenge. But this only and also this only works for the application that is being built um, uh, that that uh, the the uh, application the SaaS provider owns, so it won't work for legacy applications because it's very hard to change legacy applications, and also it doesn't work. This model application code changes will not work on the third-party applications. If there is a third-party application, then there is no way we can change the code, so that uh, application layer encryption cannot be uh, implemented. Now that is the first challenge. The second challenge is even though uh, you know they manage to integrate. Uh, application code and application layer encryption within their application, um, but still it will break database operations. For example, uh, if a database column happens to have a column with integers, if all the integers are encrypted and we cannot do any database operations, any math operations or like average or sum on that column, or uh, we cannot do any of the uh, range queries on that column. Uh, we cannot do any uh, you know, um, string session, whatever. Right? So once the data is encrypted, all the database operations such as sorting or all those operations will break because the semantics of encrypted data is completely different uh, from the original data. Indexing will not work. So all those database operations will start. Break. So that is the second problem with application layer encryption. The second, the third problem is, so in, even if you implement application layer encryption, it also puts the encryption key management, which is a huge challenge. I mean, you know, which managing which key belongs to which tenant and uh, how to manage the keys, how to rotate the keys, how to create the keys, how to store the keys in a secure environment. All those things puts an additional challenge on implementing application layer encryption. So, uh, so these are the challenges with ALE and uh, Baffle actually addressed those uh, transparent with application layer encryption challenges with what we call as transparent application layer encryption. In this model, we eliminate the need for uh, code changes and the application side by actually using a SQL proxy. The SQL proxy now is responsible for uh, you know, managing or uh, encrypting the data, uh, but uh, the application remains as it is. There, is. there are no changes to the application. I mean, uh, even the new applications or legacy, legacy applications can be used and the uh, third party applications can be used without any changes, but still uh, can make use of application layer encryption with this SQL proxy. The second one is actually how to make sure that the database operations won't break. So here, actually, we use uh, uh, Postgres uh, database extensions. So Postgres has this nice database extensions model, which we make use of uh, to build our own extensions that actually helps us to make sure that all the database operations will work on the encrypted data uh, without any breakage. The operations such as sorting or uh, filtered queries or wildcard searches, all those things will work, even though the underlying data is encrypted. So we use a Postgres database extensions uh, to actually do that um, to make uh, to enable that uh, enable that operations enable those operations now the third one is actually we have a management console through which uh, uh, the key management can be done as i mentioned before the third challenge is encryption key management so there is a unified or common management console which is used for actually you know, managing all the keys i mean mapping uh, keys to tenants as well as you know um, creating keys or rotating keys or saving the keys or storing the keys in a secure um, environment all those things are managed automatically by the 
centralized key management uh, uh, management console. So, so, so they basically the transparent application layer encryption kind of solves the challenges with uh, the traditional application layer encryption uh, with the SQL proxy, with the database extensions, and the centralized uh, encryption key management. Okay, so now we have established application layer encryption and how it can be easily adopted by uh, the SaaS providers or the applications. So now I go over uh, the architecture, how exactly it works. As I mentioned before, we have three components. So there is a, um, a proxy, we call it Baffle Shield proxy. It sits in between the application and the database, Postgres database, and all the traffic from the application goes through this proxy. The proxy basically is able to pass the queries and then identify the data that needs to be uh, protected and then transform the data, either encryption or tokenization, and then forwards the query with the encrypted data to the database. So the data lands in the database in an encrypted format. So data remains encrypted in the database tier. So, uh, so this is a proxy um, model. So the proxy, integrating the proxy with application is very easy. It's just a connection strings change. Instead of application directly talking to the database, it now actually you know, connects to the uh, IP address of the, uh, the Baffle Shield proxy. Now, the Baffle Shield proxy, um, the second one is the Baffle extensions, which runs as part of the database itself. The extensions are installed by the proxy during startup time. And these extensions actually use the Postgres extensions model. And we actually rely on uh, uh, Postgres extensions, uh, such as uh, PGTLE, Trusted Language Extensions, as well as um, the uh, PL Trust. So the extensions are implemented using the Rust language and uh, they're installed uh, by the proxy uh, during startup time. And uh, we use the PL Rust and PGTLE uh, infrastructure for doing it. The reason why we chose Rust is because of performance. We have built extensions with PL, PG, SQL as well. But compared to that, uh, PL Rust is much more uh, performant and it is easy to install uh, in the Postgres database. So that is the extension part. The third one is the, the Baffle Manager, the, the management console that I talked about, which is the Baffle Manager. Uh, that is the uh, console uh, in which uh, it manages, in addition to managing the keys and stuff, encryption keys and stuff, it is also used for configuring the proxy. The proxy can be told uh, to do field level encryption. It can be told which column to encrypt under which table, under which database, uh, which tenant needs to be, uh, which tenant needs to use which key and all those stuff can be configured in the Baffle Manager. And then the Baffle Manager pushes the corresponding policies to the proxy uh, layer, and then proxy actually makes use of those policies to uh, do um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data protection. So yeah, that's, that's actually the three different components, the proxy, the, the extensions, and the Baffle Manager. All of them actually work together uh, to make the application layer encryption easier. Okay, so that is architecture. Uh, now I move on to the how this architecture can is used in the multi-tenant environment. So in the multi-tenant environment, the application obviously is a SaaS platform. The SaaS platform is the application. And then the proxy actually sits in between uh, the SaaS platform and the multi-tenant Postgres database. Uh, now, uh, the, all the traffic from the SaaS platform goes through the proxy. And then the proxy can be, can be configured either to actually you know, identify data in the role level or database level. We call it role level encryption or database level encryption. I have more details on RLE and DLE in the upcoming slides. So proxy is capable of uh, identifying both. And then it can be configured to use uh, the tenant key. I mean, depending upon uh, the, which data belongs to which tenant, the proxy automatically chooses the corresponding key of the tenant and then uses that key for in encrypting the data uh, before it reaches the database. So now all the traffic goes to the proxy and then all the tenant's traffic uh, data goes to the proxy. And then depending upon the configuration, uh, the proxy actually picks and chooses the uh, correct tenant key and then uh, encrypts the data before it reaches the database layer. Now, of course, the Baffle extensions will actually also know, understand about the tenant keys, and uh, it actually uses those corresponding keys uh, to make sure that operations, or all the database operations can still happen, even though the columns are uh, encrypted in a secure way. So the proxy can also procure the keys from different uh, places, uh, which I, I mean, uh, which I have some details later. It can be either from the SaaS providers environment or from the tenants environment. So it's called it bring your own key or it, I mean, hold your own key. So all these, so this kind of model actually meets the data shredding compliance requirements. Here, uh, tenant data is isolated cryptographically using tenants own keys and the database operations don't break. And then tenants always have the control over the data. They can actually go to the Baffle Manager console 
and then they can actually disable the key. And then once the key is disabled, the SaaS platform will no longer be able to decrypt, uh, see the decrypted data. Okay, so that's on the multi-tenant uh, uh, with application layer encryption. So as I mentioned before, there are two types of, um, so okay, there's the data can be, depending upon the SaaS platform or SaaS provider schema, um, you know, the data can be, uh, tenants data can be, uh, you know, uh, stored in different ways. The case of uh, row level encryption, uh, the tenant data is commingled uh, in every table. Uh, so the table itself basically will have data belonging to multiple tenants. Now, the, as this data flows to the proxy, the proxy has to kind of need to determine which tenant uh, this particular row belongs to. So this is called tenant determination. This tenant determination can be done by multiple ways. So it all depends upon the, the SaaS provider's uh, uh, Postgres uh, schema. So if the schema happens to have uh, a tenant ID as part of every table, then that uh, that information can be used by the proxy. Uh, so, so this particular example has that uh, model. Here, there is a separate column called tenant ID, which basically has the tenant identifier. And then as the traffic goes to the proxy, the proxy makes use of this tenant identifier. And then using this tenant identifier, it finds out the corresponding tenant's key and then uses that key for encrypting the rest of the uh, columns in the row. Uh, so in the case of tenant one, tenant one's key will be used to encrypt the name, date, and transaction credit card of that particular, uh, in this example, only name, transaction credit card are encrypted. So all those columns will be encrypted with tenant's own, tenant one's own key. Similarly for tenant two, tenant three, and tenant four, and so on. So, so that is the first way uh, the, the proxy can identify uh, do the tenant determination based upon the tenant ID, which is part of the table itself. But in some of uh, some cases, the schema may not have the tenant ID in all the tables. So some tables may have tenant ID and some of the ta tables that are joined, um, which may not have the tenant ID as part of the, um, as part of the columns. So in those cases, uh, the proxy can be configured to use uh, two different uh, approaches. One is something called SQL comments. In this case, the SAS platform actually attaches uh, the tenant identifier as part of the SQL comment uh, for every query. So every query, when it reaches the proxy, it will have a SQL comment, which basically um, has the tenant identifier value. And based upon this identifier value, then actually the proxy will pick and choose the corresponding tenant key. In the third model, uh, the third uh, way to uh, determine the tenant is using session variables. The SAS platform, uh, instead of actually doing SQL comment, it can also set a session variable with a tenant identifier. And the proxy can be configured to look for that particular session variable and then uses that as an indication for uh, the tenant key to be used. So all the queries that follow this, follow that set uh, session variable query will be uh, protected using that particular tenant's uh, key. So to, to summarize the role level encryption, there are three ways for de tenant determination. One is using the tenant identifier in the, as part of the column itself, uh, as one of the columns in the table itself, or it can be sent as part of the SQL comment, or it can be sent uh, set as part of a session variable, and then proxy can make use of the session variable to identify the tenant. So that's basically how the row level encryption can be achieved using the proxy and the, the Postgres uh, environment. Of course, as I mentioned before, the extensions will, will also know about the tenant keys and then uh, you know, uses them appropriately for uh, advanced op operations such as sorting and other database operations. So that is the row level encryption. The second uh, um, uh, model is the database, uh, second model of multi-tenancy is the database level. So here, the SaaS platform actually creates logical databases per tenant. So there's a separate logical database created for uh, each tenant. And then all, all those logical databases uh, can be in the same uh, the Postgres instance. So here, and the, 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 and the proxy has to identify which database, logical database belongs to which tenant. So this, uh, this can be done in the connection stream. Typically when uh, logical database is being used uh, as part of the tenant, as part of the SaaS platform's initial connection establishment for the particular tenant, and the connection string, connection string will have the database name. The Postgres, uh, the connection string will have the, the, the database name and the proxy can be configured to look for this particular database name in the connection string. And then based upon the database name, the, post, uh, the, uh, the proxy will pick and choose the corresponding tenant key for encrypting all the queries for the, in that particular connection. So all the queries in the particular connection 
going to that particular logical database, we'll be using that particular tenant's key for encrypting uh, that data. So in this example, if you see, there are two different uh, logical databases, and obviously we need not have any tenant identifier as part of the column. So it's on the database level. So based on the based upon the database name, um, um, uh, DB tenant one or DB tenant n, the corresponding key will be used uh, by the proxy uh, for encrypting all the data in that particular uh, table. So that is the database uh, level encryption, and that's how um, this is how proxy can uh, determine the um, tenant based upon the database name. Okay, and uh, so so now the we can go over uh, the different types of key management. Uh, in the case of, um, and, uh, there are two types. One is bring your own key, and another one that we'll discuss later is uh, hold your own key. In the case of uh, bring your own key, um, the all the tenants um, uh, tenants actually provide their keys uh, to the SaaS provider. Uh, the SaaS provider will basically will have a, um, a you know a portal uh, which is actually exposed through the Baffin Manager, through which the tenant can actually submit their keys. Now, all the tenant keys will actually reside in the SaaS provider managed key management system. The SaaS provider can have, like, you know, in the case of AWS, they can use AWS KMS, or uh, in the case of Azure, Azure Key Wall, but that key management system belongs to the SaaS provider's account. So, SaaS providers actually manage the key management system, and all the tenant, key, tenant keys will be in this SaaS provider's uh, key management system. So, this actually is uh, the advantage of this model is. The tenant provider doesn't have to, you know, manage their keys by their own, but uh, they can actually securely, uh, you know, um, uh, share their keys with the SaaS pro provider. Uh, I mean, that is the bring your own key, and then the SaaS provider actually, you know, manages all those keys for the tenant. Uh, so of course, the um, tenants still have control over the data. The the portal, the the Baffin Manager um, portal, uh, exposed to the SaaS platform, will basically have um, uh, workflows. For the tenants to actually disable the keys. So whenever they want to disable their key that is being used by the SaaS provider, um, um, uh, they can go to the portal and disable the keys. Once the key is disabled, the proxy will not be able to decrypt the data, the tenants, that particular tenant's data, and then um, the SaaS platform just cannot see the data anymore. So the data is effectively shared uh, in, the, in the SaaS environment. So this is the bring your own key model. The key actually, you know, is uh, managed by the SaaS provider. And then that actually you know, reduces the burden on the tenants to manage their own keys. Okay. The, the second one is the hold your own key model. In this model, because of security reasons, the tenants need not actually share their keys with the SaaS platform, but they can actually hold on to their own key and then they manage they can manage their keys in their own key management services. For example, the tenant one is running uh, in the in the in the uh, Amazon AWS environment, they can use uh, uh, AWS key management services to actually manage their keys. Or uh, tenants can run in, in a different environment, um, in a, some other cloud, or tenant may run in an on-prem environment, doesn't matter. So they can actually hold the key in their own environment, in their own key management system. Um, and, then this, uh, and then the SaaS platform, the, the proxy, buffer shield proxy can be configured uh, to actually get the keys from the tenant's own key management services uh, during runtime. So it need not be the baffle proxy it can go to any of the, it can be configured to go to either, you know, you know different tenant, tenants can use different key management services. It can be configured to uh, go to the corresponding key management services to get the keys and then use that key uh, for encrypting and decrypting data. So tenant one may use AWS KMS, tenant N can use HashiCorp, doesn't matter. The proxy can be configured to actually you know, go and get those keys up, up, um, accordingly and then encrypt the data before it reaches the Postgres uh, database. So this is the this is called hold your own key. The tenants hold their key. The tenants will not be shared uh, with the SaaS platform, and uh, it actually is better in security. But at the same time, it actually puts the burden of um, tenants key uh, holding the tenants key in the SaaS and uh, the tenants uh, own environment. Um, but of course, it's flexible enough so the tenant can pick and choose the key management services that they trust, which can be used, uh, which they can use, and uh, the proxy will support or proxy can get the keys. From those key management services based upon the uh, policies. So this is the hold your own key model. Yeah, so that's basically is the bring your own key and who, uh, hold your own key. So that's um, uh, the the uh, that's all uh, I have, and probably I'll probably summarize the whole thing before the questions. So the first one is actually obviously the uh, cryptographic isolation of data, tenant data is needed in the multi-tenant uh, environments such as Postgres. 
this actually enables our tenants to actually um, you know uh, share that sensitive data with the SaaS providers uh, without actually worrying about losing control over the data. So there is a need for cryptographic isolation, um, uh, losing I mean without uh, worry, worrying about losing control as well as making sure that the data is strongly isolated in the in the third party environment. So that is a need. And then the current methods such as edge encryption or transparent data encryption doesn't solve those uh, uh, those needs. Um, you know, they they either break the uh, operations SaaS platform operation, uh, which is actually not good because the reason why SaaS services are being used is actually make use of the services. The services break, then it's uh, it's actually not good. And second one is the transparent data encryption, which is not actually relevant uh, for the current threat models. So application layer encryption is what is needed in this uh, multi-tenant uh, database uh, data isolation. And uh, application layer encryption should actually make sure that um, uh, it doesn't uh, break the uh, operations and it can employ the uh, bring your own key or reach your own key models. And uh, also application layer encryption, um, you know, need to make sure that uh, uh, there is no need for application changes. So these are some of the challenges of application layer encryption that needs to be resolved. And transparent application layer encryption actually resolves all three of them. Just it makes sure that there is no need for application changes. Uh, the architecture makes sure that uh, you know data is strongly isolated using uh, cryptographically. And the architecture also makes sure that um, it puts the control of data to the data owner by bring your own key and the hit your own key. So it, uh, it, uh, this transparent application layer encryption architecture uh, that is being provided it actually makes uh, the SaaS providers adoption of application layer encryption easier and they'll be enabling their um, clients or the customers SaaS tenants to share their sensitive data without any uh, without any issues. Um, so yeah, so this actually um, provides a model uh, to enable all these solutions without with minimal effort. So that's the summary. Okay, so that's the last slide I have. Um, I can probably open the um, forum for Q&A. We have our uh, colleague, um, um, Sushant, that would like to moderate Q&A. Go ahead, Sushant. Sure, uh, Rajan. So there are a couple of questions that kind of came through. Um, what kind of managed or hosted databases does uh, are supported? Okay, so so uh, because we actually rely on the on the extensions, the, uh, the uh, as long as the managed databases support, uh, like extensions such as PG TLE, the Trusted Language Extensions, as well as uh, PL Trust. Uh, we should be able to install the extensions in the managed or hosted databases and then and then use this feature. We also have another variation of extension which is uh, PL, which is based out of PLPG SQL. Um, that doesn't require uh, you know PL Trust, and in that case, uh, that extension can also be used in the managed databases. But the difference uh, we actually encourage people to use PL Trust because uh, PL Trust is much more performant when compared to uh, PLPG SQL. And Rajan, which are the databases that actually support that uh, PLS? Yeah, uh, yeah. Currently, the hosted databases such as Amazon, uh, AWS, RDS uh, support um, um, uh, PGTLE and PLTS. That's what we use. For other hosted databases, we use uh, PLPG SQL. Great. Um, and then, what kind of key management services are supported? Okay, so we actually support uh, multiple key management services. Uh, the proxy can be configured to get keys from uh, AWS uh, KMS, uh, AWS uh, Key Management Service. Uh, it can be configured to procure keys from uh, Azure Key Vault. It can be configured to get keys from IBM um, uh, Key Management Services. Uh, it, it, can, uh, it can it also supports HashiCorp, and it also supports standard uh, key management protocols such as KMIP and PKCS11, um, and uh, it supports GCP's uh, key management services as well. Awesome. All right. Uh, another question for you. Um, what are the considerations for uh, going with the logical databases versus world level? Yeah, it actually depends upon the, uh, it's completely dependent upon the, the SaaS providers uh, schema and their design. Uh, some of our customers actually go with the logical databases uh, just because their customers ask for it. And uh, some of them go with, um, with uh, you know, uh, row level or uh, table, table level multi-tenancy. It uh, it actually depends upon uh, the SaaS providers uh, SaaS platform design and uh, how they have implemented this solution. All right, um, looks like we got another question in the chat. Um, how does this solution compare to the PG underscore encrypt extension? Yeah, so ours is actually, yeah, so the PG crypto or uh, those extensions those need application changes because 
um, you know, uh, for using those UDFs, for example, the application layer has to actually, um, uh, you know, create a query with those PG crypto UDFs um, to actually, you know, uh, use those functionalities. But as I mentioned before, ours is a transparent application layer encryption. We don't need changes to the application. The application can remain as it is. As the traffic goes through the proxy, proxy will do the necessary transformation of the queries before it reaches the database. So the application need not change. Third, part, third party applications will continue to work. And there is uh, minimal effort or no effort from the application developer side. All they have to do is, instead of connecting to the database IP address, they have to connect to the, the proxy IP address. One of the things that you've mentioned previously is that it's not just the code changes uh, to add it in, it's all the maintenance. Um, yeah. Once you've made those code changes, right, you have to make sure you maintain. And then uh, the other aspect is how do security policies get enforced? If it requires code changes, that it becomes yet another burden to watch out for when code changes are required. Exactly, exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it actually simplifies the effort much, much further. I mean, there is no need for uh, code changes as well as no need for key management burden, key management overhead. All those things will be taken out with the proxy approach. All right, it looks like we've got, uh, that that covers all the questions. Uh, let me bring Lindsay back on to finish off the webinar. Sure. Yes, wonderful. Um, first of all, thank you, Team Baffle. You guys were great. I can see all of the effort uh, and thought that you put into this presentation. Um, and to all of our attendees, thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us. Um, again, this uh, webinar will be available, the recording will, by early next week if you'd like to revisit um, or share with colleagues. And we hope to see you on future Postgres world webinars. So thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you soon. <laughs>